Hey, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? You guys look good today. Praise God. I can tell we are going to have a, a, a powerful experience with the Lord today. You know, it is Resurrection Sunday and there's no better day to be in the house of the Lord. But i got to tell you, every day is a good day to be in God's presence. Amen? Um, let's just open with a word of prayer. Would you, would you stand? We want to just invite the Holy Spirit to, uh, to take control today. I, I cannot wait to see what, what's going to happen. I know we're going to baptize some people, but you know what? That's just a small little piece of what God has planned for us today. So, uh, but you know what? It can't be because of something I have planned. I want what the Holy Spirit has planned. Amen. So, will you will you just open your hearts to uh, let God do what He wants to do today? Father God, we thank you that Lord, you came. You came to die and to rise again so that we could experience the power of Your presence in our lives every day. So that we could experience resurrection life. Not just when we die, but every single day. And so we ask, Holy Spirit, that You would have Your way in this service today. God, I I set aside every agenda every plan. And I ask, Lord God, that You would guide our service today. Father, take control in every way we ask. And we give it all to You. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Awesome. You can be seated. We're going to uh, just go over a couple of announcements. Of course, we're having a baptism at the end of the service today. Um, We have three people that have uh, given their hearts to the Lord or, or have, have just not been baptized. They have known Jesus for a long time, a couple of them, uh, but weren't baptized. And then one person that has given their heart to the Lord recently that wants to make a declaration of their faith. And, um, and so that's exciting. Um, but we'll do that towards the end of our service. Um, today, of course, is, is Resurrection Sunday. And um, if you came dressed to the nines and you want to take a family picture, um, we have a, a little setup out there with some Easter eggs and decorations and some goofy bunny ears, if that's your thing. Um, not me, really. Doesn't look good on this bald head for some reason. Um, so anyway, uh, help yourself to that. Um, we have several things coming up. There's a men's retreat on May 18th and 20th. If you're interested in that, I would encourage you guys to uh, see Kimmy later on for exact pricing because it all depends on what you want to do. There is also the Invest Conference for Leaders. If you're interested in going, please see Kimmy. That's May 1st and 2nd. Um, We are looking for some volunteers in the next few weeks to clean up the yard now that the snow is going away. So if you're interested or you've got some time, Please see me after church. I'd love to give you some stuff to do or catch up with you and work with you on things. Um, Also, you'll find, I think everybody in your bulletin, there's a letter from uh, Unity Church, uh, not Unity Church, Unity Christian School, um, and they are looking for another teacher for next year because they want to expand and be able to open up to more kids. Um, It's a great ministry. Uh, and, uh, and we are looking for somebody to, to help make things happen there. Um, and if you're interested in that, you should see Jake Buto, the guy with the beard in the booth right now. Um, and uh, he's the administrator of the school. So if you're interested in uh, working, with, working with young people and, uh, and doing the work of the Lord that way, that's a great avenue. Um, so you say is back on this week. Um, so if you're a girl between, what is it, 14, 13 and up, 
um, and you're interested in that, you should see Kimmy um, Wednesdays at, from 5 to 7 um, and all of our other regular meetings as scheduled. Wow, that was a lot to spit out all at once, but that was a big list. So now that we got the business out of the way, um, if you would stand, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings and give you a chance to greet one another in the Lord. We have lots of visitors today, so I'd encourage you to shake a hand to somebody you don't know and introduce yourself. Um, but we'll pray over the offering and then we'll release you and get the worship team ready. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are Jaira, that you provide. And so, Father God, we thank you for the offering that we're about to, to take up, Lord God. We ask, Father, that you would bless both the gift and the giver, multiply to meet every need, and we ask that your sweet spirit be, um, be honored in everything that we do and say throughout this service. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you would, come and bring your tithes and offerings. Greet one another in the Lord. And if the worship team wants to come and get ready, we're going to get to it. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> okay, everybody, if you can uh, find your seats again, we're going to get started with worship. Uh, I'm going to open up today by reading some um, from Luke chapter 23. Um, I just want to share with you as we're going into resurrection uh, weekend here and we're, we're talking about the resurrection of the Lord. It's good for us to get into the scripture before we get into worship so that we can kind of wrap our heads around what these songs are about, what, what it is that we're here for. And maybe you're here today and you're, uh, you're new to, to, to church or you don't come very often, whatever it is. Um, but really, everything that we're doing today is all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus who came and died for us and rose again. And uh, the last uh, couple of weeks, we've been talking about the thieves that hung next to Jesus on the cross. And... Um, this moment in history that we're going to be talking about today is what separates Jesus from every other wise teacher, from every, uh, every other person of faith in all the religions of the world. It validates all that was written in the Word of God. 
And today as we get into worship, I don't want us to focus on anything else other than what it is that Jesus has done for us. And so I'm going to read Luke chapter 23, starting in verse 32. And I'm I'm going to read all the way into chapter 24 just for a minute. And so what I would ask you to do is focus on the words that I'm reading today. Try to picture in your mind what it would be like to be there. And then we're going to go right into our first song. So why don't you stand and and just prepare yourself for worship. Prepare yourself for, for the singing of the songs and... You know, maybe bow your heads and kind of just put yourself in an attitude of, of worship. Luke chapter 23, verse 32 says, Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots and divided his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers mocked him, and coming up and offering him sour wine, saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanging railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And, and we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, and Jesus called out with a loud voice and said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this was an innocent man. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place under the uh, returned home beating their breasts, and all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man. He had not consented to their decision or act, an action. And he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And then he took it down and wrapped it in linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid and they returned and prepared spices and ointments and on the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment but on the first day of the week on the first day of the week at early dawn they went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They went, they were perplexed about this. Behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek 
the living amongst the dead. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the power of the resurrection that transformed the world, that transformed our hearts. And we ask, Lord God, today, as we lift up the name of Jesus, as we worship and pray, that God, you would be glorified, that your name would be risen above every other name in all the earth. Father, that today we would lift the mighty name of Jesus high, that all men might know that you are the Son of God that came to be the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. God, we give you glory today. God, we give you honor today. Let's worship the Lord together. Let's worship the Lord together. Amen?
hymn that we just sang. I serve a risen Savior. He is in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. It doesn't matter what people say. He lives. He is a living God. And that's the God that we worship. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. Just the time I need him, he's always near. And all the world around me, I see his love and care. Though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. If your heart is growing weary, then you just need to start singing. You just need to start worshiping because when we worship, those things leave us and he comes in. That's when he can come in and dwell in us. So let's worship him today, the risen Savior. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. We're going to be doing some water baptisms today, as you can see. And some of these songs are um, kind of based on that. When you ask Jesus into your heart, when you ask him to be the Lord of your life, he comes in, and the outward expression of that is the water baptism, where you tell others, yes, I've accepted Jesus, and this is to show you and to serve him, to, to show him that you are a risen creation, that the old has passed away and the new has come. So we're going to sing victory in Jesus. Because of our salvation, we have victory in Jesus. And then a lot of our songs are to do with Easter today. Who is this King of glory? Precious Jesus, Lord Almighty, King of our hearts, King of glory. You, Jesus. God, thank you that we have victory. We have victory because of what you've done. If you had not sent your son, if Jesus had not died, we would not have victory to live and to overcome. But Jesus, you overcame. You overcame the cross and the grave. And so we sing. God, we can sing eternal hallelujahs to you, our King, because you live.
Church, I don't want you to miss this moment. The Spirit of the Lord is here today. And we're going to do one more song. But if you're here today and you need prayer, I want you to come down so we can pray for you. If you need a healing in your body, Jesus died, He bled. The stripes on his back paid for healing in our bodies. And today's a day when God can reach you in your sickness. He can reach you in your sin. He can reach you in your challenges. He can reach you in your problems. But I want to give a moment during this uh, worship time for you to come forward if you need prayer. Because I believe God will meet you in this place right now. Go ahead and start that next song. And if you're here today and you need prayer, come on down. I want to pray for you. Is there anybody? I know there's at least one because they talked to me earlier. So I want to pray. things I want to be thankful is that the Lord healed my mother. She's out of the hospital. Praise God. And my brother Leo is uh, here. Let me shut this off. Who is 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hey, can you just give him a shout of praise, a clap offering to the Lord? Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, we want to give you glory today and honor. We lift your name high. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, time is going by. And uh, so we're going to transition. We're going to let the kids go downstairs and get ready for their classes down there. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you're here and you're getting baptized, I'd ask that you go change if you haven't done that already. Um, and we're going to get right into the word. All of a sudden, I have a tickle in my throat, of course. But luckily, Lynn always brings me a cough drop every Sunday. So that works out. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and get into the Word this morning and just, uh, you know, I just pray that today would be a day when you, as, uh, as children of God, as the people of God, would be able to come into the house of God and be transformed once again. Maybe you've had a relationship with the Lord. And, um, you know, we go through seasons where we have uh, droughts, just like the rain. We have spiritual droughts that come in. I pray that if that's you today, that today would be a day of renewal and transformation and change. And Jesus going to the cross is all about renewal. It's all about God coming down to take what is broken and making it new. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that God has made me new. Amen? Anybody else? Yes. You wouldn't have liked me. You wouldn't have liked me before, church. You might not like me now, but you wouldn't like me even less before. God is so good. He's so faithful. He can, take a, he can take someone that is broken and make them whole. He can take someone that is hurting and heal them. He can take somebody that would be unredeemable and redeem them. You know? I feel like if I, if I was a, a tin can, <coughs> I'd be one that somebody stepped on. It just kind of, you know, crumpled up and wrecked. You know, but to him, there's still value. Yeah, you don't change it. That would be great. Thank you. No, not out here. No, thank you. <laughs> I love that guy. It's fantastic. Uh, it's good. I don't even have to tell a joke now. It's <laughs> so good. So we're here today. This is Resurrection Sunday. And I, I hope that God has resurrected some new life in you during the worship. What a great time in God's presence. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we're going to be talking about the middle cross today. We're going to be talking about the man on the middle cross. Um, the last two Sundays we've talked about the two thieves that were hanging next to him, the the one that rejected Jesus, that, that shows um, that he was unconcerned with who Jesus was or didn't believe who Jesus was. And, um, and, and how he, because of those choices, because of those things, he died in his sin. And how the other thief who called out to Jesus on the cross, he died to his sin. He allowed his sin to die with Jesus on the cross. But today we're going to be talking about this Jesus who died for sin. Who died for sin. And not just any sin, but my sin and your sin. Not just some random person's sin. Not just for the good people's sin, but for all sin. Wow. Wow. Yeah, amen. Come on. Come on. That's good, That's good preaching. Come on. No, that's good. We need to give thanks to the Lord for He's good. And He died for our sin. 
Jesus did it all. I love the songs this morning. The name of Jesus. The mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Hmm. The third talk, uh, the third cross, which we'll talk about today, is the cross that dies for sin and leads to one way. <clears throat> it's good news. I like good news. I get a lot of bad news. Anybody else get bad news? I get bad news all the time. All I have to do is open up my my Facebook page or Instagram reels or go on the news. You can find all sorts of bad news out there. But today we have some good news, and that is Jesus is alive. He He didn't just die and raise back to life and then die again. He is alive currently. And, uh, and to me, that's the best news that we could ever get. You might meet here and you might say, you know what, I don't fully understand this. The good news is that Jesus' life didn't end with death. He did not come to just show us how to die. Right? He didn't just come to show us how to die. He came, us, came to show us how to live. He came to show us what it is to have life. On Friday, on Good Friday, I don't know why we call it good, because it seemed awful bad to me when I read about it. (coughs) But on Good Friday, Peter was denying, Mary was crying, the disciples were hiding, Hope was lost. Jesus was dead. The tomb was shut. Satan was laughing and the soldiers stood guard. And it looked pretty dark. Saturday was silent and mournful. But then Sunday came. And hope returned. Peter was running. Mary was proclaiming. The disciples were shouting, the tomb is empty. The soldiers were shuddering. And Jesus is alive. It's a beautiful thing. What a beautiful day. Jesus' cross represents death for sin. But Jesus' resurrection, <clears throat> resurrection concluded sin. Jesus' resurrection and and His death for us brings about new life also for us. And today, we're going to be talking about the way that Jesus brings us life. And there's three kinds of life that He brings us. He brings us spiritual life first. And what is spiritual life? Spiritual life is something that we feel inside of us. Something that is changed on the spiritual side of things. Ephesians chapter 2 is where we're going to be reading. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to take a moment and just pray. <coughs> and if you would, pray that this tickle would go away. I haven't had it the whole time I've been here, but now I do. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank You for Your Word, that it is truth. Father, that it is sharp, sometimes pokey. And so, Father, I pray that You would poke us today with Your Word, that You would prod us by Your Spirit into a new place, that You would cause us, Lord God, to to recognize the power of resurrection to bring life into us. And just thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Ephesians chapter 2, starting with verse (coughs) 1, describes our situation. It says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the Spirit is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom... We all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, 
and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us, everybody say, alive. alive. Okay, you're still here. Good. Together with Christ, by grace you have been saved and raised up with Him and seated with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the ages... He might, in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Somebody in this room might be thinking to myself, well, I was never really dead, so I, this doesn't really make sense. How could I be dead in my transgressions and sin? How could I be dead when I'm here today and alive? How could that be? It's a good question. We're talking about spiritual death. We're talking about something that hasn't quite happened yet, but is already working within us. Now, a good example of this, how many, do we have any, anybody that's got a sibling in the room? Okay, all right, so you've got siblings here today. All right, now, I want you to look at your sibling, and I want you to think about that moment in time when you were roughhousing in the house, Okay? and you knocked over a lamp, or you broke something, or you did something, and one of you looked at the other and said, oh, we're dead. Okay, that feeling inside of I know I've done wrong, I'm not dead yet, but I know I'm dead. You know that feeling? That's what we're talking about. That, that feeling of guilt and uh-oh. Right? That I have sinned, I have fallen short in some way. Now, <clears throat> I, I, I didn't play much with my brother. My brother's eight years younger than me. But when I was a teenager, I had a, a, a brother from another mother, my buddy David, and we were inseparable. We did stuff together all the time. And when <laughs> there was one time we were over at this friend's house, this girl that, that we both hung out with, and um, uh, she, was, she was being kind of sassy, and we weren't having it that day for whatever reason. And we were all good friends and just joking around. We decided we were going to pick her up, toss her in the sink, and turn the sink on, you know? Well, we did that, of course. We picked her up, we tossed her in the sink, and we turned the sink on. We were going to try to get her all wet. Well, she grabbed the nozzle and started spraying us. And so water's going all over the place. She loses her balance. And when she loses her balance, she tries to catch herself by grabbing the faucet. When she grabbed the faucet, she broke the faucet clean off. Now water's spraying everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. It's going everywhere. Of course, we're a couple of, couple of teenagers, and we don't know where the, how to shut water off. So, <laughs> so this goes on for about an hour before we figure out where the valve is. And once we got the water shut off, of course, nobody's parents are home. I remember her looking at us and saying, we're dead. And so this, this spiritual death is that internal feeling when we know that we have done something wrong and judgment is coming, right? That feeling that when we know that we have done something that we cannot fix, we don't know, I don't, I'm not a plumber, okay? I can't pay to fix it because I'm a kid and I'm, you know, I don't have any money. There's no way to make reparations for the things that we have done. And so literally, we just look at each other and we say, I'm dead. Right? And so if you're here today and you've ever been in that place where you, you've done something and you have felt that feeling and it hasn't gone away, that, that feeling of guilt or shame or brokenness that comes when we do something that is wrong that we know is wrong, maybe we did it willfully, or maybe like me, we didn't mean to break the sink, but it happened. That place of spiritual death comes in and begins to eat away at us. And there's a sense that we have 
that there's no way that we can make it right. When a vase falls on the floor and shatters into a a bunch of pieces, you can glue it back together, but it's never quite the same. You can can make it look all right, but when you really look close, it's never quite the same. And we're the same way. A lot of times when we go through life, things happen to us and we are broken and we try to put the pieces back together. We glue stuff on. Maybe there's a chip we didn't find. No matter what it is, it seems like things will never be the same. And today, I want to talk to you about the fact that that is that feeling of spiritual death. That is that feeling uh, that internally, we are stuck in our sin and our brokenness. And this is what Paul is talking about. This is what, this is what Paul is trying to explain. Is that before we knew Christ, or if you don't know Christ, you're in this place where the sins and transgressions of your life have brought spiritual death into your life. And Jesus came to die so that you wouldn't have to pay the price for your sin. Come on. Yeah. Jesus paid it all. Hallelujah. He's so good. He's so good. How does that work? You might be saying, how does that work? When that feeling in the pit of your stomach is there, when you've done something that you know you can't fix, you can't pay for, no matter how much you try, no matter what you do, you feel like reckoning is coming. James chapter 1, verse 15 says this, The desire when it's conceived gives birth to sin, and sin when it's fully grown brings forth death. Whenever we fall, And we've all fallen. We've all sinned. Every single one of us. Every single one of us. We all experience that feeling of death at some point. As kids, we experience that micro version of spiritual death. That little bit of fear that comes over us when mom says, wait until your dad comes home little micro version of that that knowing that there's a reckoning that's there my kids when they were little went through a phase where it was just like that was just the the thing you know it seems like all kids go through that phase <clears throat> and ours went through all of them went through it at the same time i don't know why but i remember at a certain point Uh, getting ready to leave for work and just looking at my kids and be like, just so you know, I'm going to come home and ask which one of you doesn't need a spanking when I get home. Because I know there's going to be... And they just like... What Paul's saying is because of our sin, judgment is upon us. He's saying because of our sin, death has entered in the same way. And we know uh, we've done something wrong. We know there'll be consequences. <sighs> the end of the passage in Ephesians, he turns it around again and he talks about this spiritual life. It says in verse 4, But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, it says. The cross of Christ makes a way for us to go from spiritual death to spiritual life. That guilt and sin can no longer have a hold on you. Because Jesus died To take your place. Jesus died 
for your sin. Your sin and my sin. Not so that we could live in death, but have resurrection life. How? There's a powerful word here that he uses, probably, in my opinion, the most powerful word in the whole Bible. It's this word grace. 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 It it, it means an unmerited, undeserved, I can't buy it sort of favor. You know? It's the kind of it's the kind of favor that that when you look back at it you you say wow I I so don't deserve this. I so don't deserve this. The other day I was teaching a class and uh, I was trying to uh, explain this particular thing to the class at the Christian school and I brought in a box of donuts. I just brought in a box of donuts. I don't bring in donuts. That's not what I do. And I explained to them that they do not deserve the donuts. Right? They don't deserve these donuts. They didn't do anything for these donuts. But they are here and they are free and they are for you. That is undeserved favor. We did not deserve the gift of Jesus Christ. Yet here we are. Grace is a Greek uh, comes from a Greek word that means charity, and it means undeserved kindness, undeserved favor, or the ability to reach, do, and achieve what you are not eligible for. That's cool. That's really cool. Because of grace. I could, not go to he- I could not go to heaven without it, but now I can. Because of my sin, I couldn't, I couldn't be set free, but now I can. There are things in this life I couldn't do in my own power, but now I can. And God wants you to live in that spirit of grace. Outside of that spirit of death. He does not want you living in a spirit of, oh, what's going to happen when dad comes home? He doesn't. A lot of us, we have this image of God, this, uh, this idea of God that he's, he's like some old man up there with a stick, just ready to give you a good whack when you get something wrong. You know, we had this old neighbor in, back in Freeport, and we would... Like he was just kind of a grumpy old fella and he'd sit on his porch and if you walked by his house, he'd yell at you for walking on his sidewalk. It was like it was his sidewalk. And it's the same idea. We, we, we have this idea in our head that God is just there to remind us how bad we are. But actually, he's there to remind us how good he is. He's there to remind us that we don't have to walk in the way we used to walk but we can have new life. The cross of Christ makes a way for us us to go from spiritual death to spiritual life. And this word grace is how we get there. So the first uh, type of life that He wants us to have is that spiritual life, that spiritual freedom from sin, that spiritual freedom from, from guilt and shame. He wants you to be free of that church. But the second thing He wants for us is abundant life. John chapter 10, verse 10. He says this, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Abundantly, church. God wants to bless you. He wants to be part of your life. He wants to come in and give you joy for times of sorrow. He wants to give you peace when there are times when you are in a storm. And I don't know about you, but this life is full of storms. This life is full of sorrow. This life is difficult. 
And what it is, is it's not that Jesus comes in and says, your life is going to be perfect. You ever see that movie, It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart? Okay. I don't know about you, but his life was not perfect. And, and I don't know about you, but my life is not perfect. I have trouble. I have struggle. I have financial problems at times. I have difficulty. But you know what? I never do it alone. I'm never in a place where I am unreachable to God. And so when there are times of trouble, I can pray to the Prince of Peace and He gives me peace. It doesn't matter what the storm is. It doesn't matter what the difficulty is. You know, I now have a friend that walks with me that understands everything that I'm going through. Have you ever been betrayed by, your, by a friend? Jesus' friend sold him He knew betrayal. He understands. So when you talk to Jesus about what's going on in your life, He he knows. He has suffered. He died. He went through disappointment and heartbreak. He went through all sorts of things in this life. He wept. He grieved. So no matter where you're at, You now have a friend that you can talk to that understands you. Wow. 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 Thank you, Jesus, that you get me. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. I have no idea where I am in my message. And Kimmy says, Amen. <laughs> this is the one in the sound booth that's trying to keep up with me on the board back there. Jesus is, says concerning worry, not that bad things won't happen, but He says, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And all the other things are going to work themselves out. Right? Don't need to worry about the simple things of life. He says concerning belonging, if you ever felt alone or lost, 1 John chapter 1, verse 12 says, As many as receive Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God, even those who believe in His name. Jesus bought a ticket for us to be with Him, to be part of His family, to belong. The abundance doesn't mean that you have everything everybody else has. It doesn't matter. All this stuff that we have in this life, we don't get to take it with you. I don't care how nice your car is, it doesn't make a very good coffin. Right? It doesn't mean that we're going to keep up with the Joneses just because we accept Jesus, it doesn't mean that life will be easy. But it does mean that we'll never be alone. He gets us. He loves us. He understands us. And He wants us to know that He loves us. John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I've spoken to you that you may know, uh, that in Me you may know You may, I can't even talk, sorry. Let me start over. (laughs) These things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation, that means trials or hardship, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. John goes on to remind us this truth in John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, You are of God, little children. And have overcome them because He, meaning the Holy Spirit, who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Why? Because He has given us what it says in, cha- in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, the Holy Spirit, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. 
For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. Right? He did not go to the cross so that you could drag yourself through this life. I feel like so many of us, we get up in the morning, we got our list of things to do, we have to physically grab our own shirt collar and get ourselves out of bed. Get ourselves through the day, just barely, and come to the end of the day, we just collapse into the satisfaction of not having anything left to do. And that's our life. You know, we, we go through the, the rut of life. And we just say, oh, well, life is just hard. It's going to be hard. It's always been hard. It's always been difficult. I've always been poor. I've always been sad. I've always been broken. I've always been this. I've always been that. And God is saying, no, I want something more for you. Greater is He that is in you. Again, it doesn't become easier. Our attitude changes because the Holy Spirit is in us. We're no longer afraid. When Jesus went to the cross, He died for our sin. He died to give us abundant life. And He died for the third type of life, which is eternal life. He does not want you to experience spiritual death, lifelong brokenness, only to run into eternal punishment. Whew. He did a lot on the cross because He loves you. He desires that you would experience the forgiveness of your sin so that you can walk in spiritual life abundant life, and then with Him in eternal life. How cool is that? Has anybody ever done anything better than that for you? No. The time that we spent in the music today was uplifting and encouraging. I mean, um, you know, yeah, my wife can play and sing, and Sarah can sing, and drummer can drum, guitarist can play. But if all we did was sing a song, we missed it. And I hope you didn't miss it. I hope that you were able to really connect with the Holy Spirit during that time. When we connect with God, we worship God when it's why. Some of us look crazy. We're on our knees or we're up with our hands raised. We're, you know, we look like those fanatical people. Well, what's, what's really going on there is, is, is this thing called worship where we recognize what it is that God has done for us. In those moments when we're singing these songs, these aren't just songs. These are... These are Anthems of praise and worship to someone who did something. And He did it in me. And He did it in you. So if I look a little nutty down front, forgive me. I'm excited about Jesus. And as wonderful as the worship was this morning, that's just practice for heaven. That's just a, that's a dry run rehearsal a little tidbit of what we're going to experience of God's glory. A little, a little bite of the grand feast of who Jesus is. So if it made you uncomfortable today, I'm sorry, but not sorry. Because when we come before God, the Spirit of God is here. That Holy Spirit that Jesus sent when He went up into heaven. He sent His Spirit down to dwell with us. And that presence that you felt here today, that's what that was. He wanted you to have life. And part of that is walking in the Spirit of life. To recognize His presence all around us. This third cross was worn by Jesus, the Son of God. 
And let me explain who it is that Jesus is just in case you missed it or you never heard it. I don't know everybody in this room. And so I don't want to miss an opportunity to share with you who it is that is this King of glory. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5-11 to 11 explains who Jesus is better than I probably could. And when we break it down, what it means in context of what Paul is trying to do with these verses, he's telling Christians who Jesus is and also reminding them to have this mindset to try to think like Jesus and act like Jesus because that's what a Christian is. And if anybody's ever treated you badly as a Christian, I'm sorry, they were just practicing. They're not quite like Jesus yet. All right? So here it is. I'm going to go slow. It says, Having this mind among you, which is yours in Christ Jesus. So he's saying to the Christians, uh, have this attitude. Have this mind. Verse 6, Who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Let's stop here for a second. In other words, he did not find his own power or position in heaven because Jesus, before he came as, as a baby in a manger, was already the Son of God in heaven. And he chose to lower himself down. We're going to talk about that in just a second. It, seems, it means that Jesus, as it is written in John chapter 1, verse 5, this is the Jesus. It says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word is Jesus. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in the beginning, uh, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, not, not a thing was made that was made. And then in verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, what's being said here is that Jesus was at the beginning in creation, actively participating in creation. And then he chose to step out of his position and humble himself to be a, a, just a human child and to, to grow so that he could be the Lamb of God. Wow. He didn't think that that was too much to step out of the power and the position of heaven. And to come down and to be that for you and me. Verse 6 again. Though who he was in the form of God did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant and being born in the likeness of men. And being found in, in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So after becoming a servant, becoming a human, he humbled himself even further and said, you know what? I'm going to die. I'm going to die for you and you and you and you, and you. I'm going to lay down my life. I'm going to shed my blood so that you can have life. Today is Resurrection Sunday, the day that we celebrate the new life that is available to us. When someone accepts the work that Jesus did on the cross and decides to accept the way Jesus made to heaven, the person decides to become a follower or a disciple of Jesus, and they become one of those people that tries to be like Jesus, that practices Christianity, gets it wrong all the time, and just tries a little harder the next day. They're not perfect, but they come to a place where they say, you know what, this Jesus is real. This Jesus died for my sins, and I want to follow after him. That's what being a disciple is. So today we, we have three people that have already made the commitment to follow Jesus. Two of them a long time ago, and one of them 
um, just recently, but none of them have been baptized. And so they wanted to come and make a, cu- a public declaration that Jesus has changed their lives. And we get to be a part of that today. As part of the Great Commission, Jesus said, Go into all the world and make disciples, teaching them to obey the things I've commanded and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. So at this time, if we can, I'm going to have Kimmy put on a little bit of music and those that are going to be baptized, I'm going to have you come forward um, and just kind of like maybe stand over here. Um, There's one, two... And three. Yeah, everybody right over here. And um, before we go any further, I'm going to pray and, um, and I'm going to kind of, we're going to go forward with this baptism, but there's a lot of people in the room here today. And I think it would be a shame for us to acknowledge three people that have given their hearts and lives to the Lord and not give you all an opportunity to know Jesus personally too. Earlier I said that He was a personal God, a personal Savior. He is someone who understands you, who knows you, and in fact died for you. And in that, If you're here today and you don't know Jesus and you want to know who He is, if you want to have someone that will walk with you all your life, if you want to have somebody that loved you enough to die for you when you were still broken, if you are a person that doesn't know Jesus, doesn't know where you're going, maybe you're here today and you say, you know what, that spirit of death, that spiritual death, that feeling of being unforgiven, that feeling of I've done wrong and I can't get past that, and you want to be set free from that, my Jesus can do that for you. My Jesus can do that for you, and He can do it today. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus and you say, you know what, I need that today, would you just raise your hand? I want to pray for you. Yeah? I see that hand. Anybody else? I see that hand. Anybody else? I need Jesus. I need to be forgiven. I need that feeling of spiritual death to lead my heart. I want to be made new. Anybody? Okay. We're going to pray and and then we're going to baptize some people. I'm going to say a few more words, but Lord Jesus, we just thank you for those people that raised their hands. God, I pray right now that in this moment, Father, they would confess to you their love for you and their need for you and that you would enter their lives and change them. Father, forgive them of their sins, cleanse their hearts, and help them to walk in a way that honors you. In Jesus' name, amen. So water baptism, we're gathered here today. We're going to celebrate these three people that have committed their lives to Jesus. We have Aiden and Mike and Evie. They've decided they want to be baptized today. We're commanded by the risen Lord to baptize those that believe. The word baptize literally means to dip or to immerse. And the symbolic meaning of uh, of baptism is what we have talked about today. The death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord. And so when we baptize someone, we put them down under the water, which represents the death of our Lord. And we bring them up into new life, which represents the resurrection power and the new life that they are starting in Jesus. And so when we do this, it's not a small thing. This is a public confession of something that has already happened internally in their lives. And so when we do this, we're going to give them a chance to share 
um, just for a moment. No sermons. We already had one of those today. I'm going to give you an opportunity to just make a confession of faith. When we do this, we put them under. We baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit because that's what Jesus commanded us to do. So when, uh, when they go under, just like Jesus, we hold them under for three days. <laughs> no? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I made the joke with Aiden. He was over at my house the other day. I said, that's how this works. We, 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 uh, we put you under, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we hold you under until you see the light. That's uh, <laughs> he didn't like that idea. <laughs> but Jesus, when he went, uh, when he died, he went down, he got the keys to death, hell, and the grave to set us free from these three things. And so what we're doing is we're showing the life, the death, and the resurrection to new life that Jesus did for us. Baptism is a public confession of what God has already done in their lives. They're not saved because they're baptized. They're being baptized because they are saved. Baptism is this outward sign that Jesus is not just Savior, it's not just fire insurance, but Lord. Meaning we're going to make Him in full charge of our lives. I'm going to give Him reins, give Him the steering wheel in life. And say, God, this is... I want to do what you want me to do. I want to act the way you want me to act. I want to be like you. Baptism is also a testimony. It expresses a change that only Christ can bring. <clears throat> and we are baptizing them upon the confession of their faith. When we believe and accept the truth, we are born again and saved. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, as we read earlier, for by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. They didn't do anything to deserve this. This is a free gift from their Lord. And so it tells us <clears throat> that we are to do this, and at this time we're going to baptize these three. Um, and if you want to take... Uh, second, and uh, I guess, who wants to go first? Anybody just, <laughs> Evie wants to get her over with, that's all right. Let me just get my shoes off here. Okay. All right, Corey, thank you. Can you come? Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's cold. Okay, yeah, go ahead and jump in. It's cold. Sorry, it's the cold one, right? Whew, yeah, that's really cold. <laughs> Just so you know, when I filled it up, I used the hose from, from out there, and, and there was ice cubes oh. that were coming out. We tried to heat it, but... I mean, I've always wanted to do a cold, cold one. This is it. This is it. It's good. Right here. They do it all the time. Awesome. <laughs> that's okay. We, we, whew. <laughs> that's a lot colder than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Um, like you said, I made Jesus Lord of my life, oh, I don't know, 10 plus years ago, but 